all right so now we have already seen that we have uh, this particular machine this is virtual machine minimal centos installation fine and uh, we will be using two more tools okay one is filezilla so by the time this is getting started let me open filezilla for you yes so this tool is filezilla and uh, along with filezilla we will be also requiring putty okay so this tool also we'll be using okay and uh, we have a document so let us open the document and yeah where is it okay so let me open that terminal yes so this document you have to okay so it has come to yeah so installing hadoop on centos this document you have to follow okay so let us go back and check the document here yes so installing uh, hadoop yarn on centos okay this one so this is the document you have to follow let me enlarge it okay so already uh, we have seen nmcli so we will cross check it okay so i am login here doing login root and the password is ht enter so it has been successfully login and here if i type ifconfig so it gives me the ip address 192.168.113 sorry 133.131 so i will take help of putty to get connected to it so here you can see here you can see that i am typing 192.168.133.131 so i'll take access through putty because it will give me ease to use the machine okay and let me minimize this uh, centos now because everything i want i can do with the help of putty itself okay so whatever i want to do i'll be able to do with the help of putty itself so let me just enlarge the fonts here so that it is clearly visible so make it 20 and bold okay apply yeah so here we'll be doing everything okay so ls pwd so i am inside slash root so the first thing we want is we need to install jdk okay but before that also as i said let's follow the document itself so here the first command is nmcli con show okay so this nmcli con show nmcli con show it will tell me that which connection is available so ens33 is available so the same command nmcli con con up ens33 okay this we need to run if we are not getting the ip address okay so if we are not getting the ip address we need to run this but we are getting the ip address okay so if we don't run then also it is fine uh, alternate command for checking the ip address we have discussed so it is this okay ip addr show and here the ip address this is 127.0.0 dot 1 this is your loopback address and uh, this inet okay this one is your ip address so this one you have to use always okay so we have already used it to connect the putty to the centos okay so that is what we have done and we have seen that diagrammatically also so putty is basically used for remote access so assuming that your centos is a remote machine and you have connected putty to centos remotely this is what you can make an assumption okay fine now moving ahead now i have to i have got the ip address so this part is done and the first step i need to do is installing java so for installing java i need the jdk file okay so i already have downloaded it okay and i will use my filezilla and uh, filezilla will help me to transfer that file okay so 192.168.133.131 and username is root and password is hd and port number is 22 okay so with this i will be able to connect to my centos so on the left hand side you can see these are my windows directories and on the left hand uh, right hand side you will be able to see that i'll be getting all my centos directories so here we can see centos directories now i need hadoop and java okay so i'll search here so you can see this is hadoop 2.7.2 tar file so i'll drag and drop okay i'll click and drag and drop it here okay 
so below you can see it is transferring that file okay by the time it is transferring let us search for jdk so this is jdk 8 okay so i'll transfer jdk 8 as well here so two files are getting transferred and here you can see below queued files okay those which are being transferred failed transfers and successful transfers in the successful transfers we are able to see that we have got the two files successfully transferred correct we are able to see that two files are successfully transferred now here we can see by ls those two files okay important thing always remember the colors also if you see the colors of these file it is red in color okay so these jar files they are they are red in color if you are getting them green in color or some other color so that means there could be some problem okay at initial stage you can think of that there is some problem maybe the file permissions have changed or something has happened so you can delete that file and once again you can transfer if you are not getting those files in red in color okay this is important you can understand now let us move ahead as per the document only so that it becomes easy for you step 2 in installing java you see here step 2 is tar hyphen xvf okay so tar hyphen xvf is a command to extract the files which are compressed so look at the extension dot tar dot cz okay if you look at the extension dot tar dot gz so these files can be extracted with the help of tar hyphen xvf so let us try tar hyphen xvf jdk okay the whole name enter it is extracting right so this is how any other software also if you download it you get a package tar dot gz you can download it again look at the colors okay the color of the extracted folder is blue this is again important many a times you will get confused in the color also okay so color of the folder is blue so i need to move this file into user local the step 3 is move and rename the jdk directory to user local and rename it to java here you can see okay this is for simplicity why we are doing this for simplicity purpose okay so here i will move mv so directly i can move jdk one point okay to user local and i can name it as java enter okay now let us do ls it is not here we are not able to see it here right now let us go and see cd slash user local and let us do ls so we are able to see the java here okay additionally we can go inside java and we can do ls so yes we are able to see here bin and other jre and other folders and files okay so that means java folder is now put there next thing is if we want to see that whether java is configured or installed okay then if we type jps then it should give us this number okay it should give us this number but initially you won't get this number because java is not configured in your machine okay i have configured it and i'm reconfiguring it so it is remembering the previous configurations understand my machine is remembering the previous configuration so i'm getting this uh, thing okay otherwise let me just uh, just show you if I don't have Java folder here okay for example if I do like this MV Java just for experimental purpose sorry CD dot dot yeah so here MV Java and I rename it to Java underscore one okay so now what has happened I don't have Java now what I have Java underscore one I have okay then we have a command source command source slash etc profile okay so i told you this is like a refresh command so i have refreshed it now if i type jps is it able to find the java, uh, jps at uh, process id and jps it is not showing us why because it needs that folder java are you getting it needs that folder so once again mv i am doing and uh, then java1 i am renaming it to java okay i'm sorry control z so if you stuck up somewhere like this, press Ctrl Z or Ctrl X or Ctrl C, you can come out of, okay. So sometimes you press slash or something and you stuck up into uh, a, a next, uh, uh, you can say shell and you don't come to a new basically line, then just press Ctrl Z or Ctrl X or Ctrl C. Okay, it'll abort that operation and it'll take you to the next uh, uh, line. Okay, so once again, MV and I have renamed it, okay. So after renaming it, next step is we have to go to etc profile, this particular file, okay, and we have to update these two lines there. So here if I open vi or vim etc profile, so I have already done that, okay.
okay so i i have already done that so you you will have to type these lines okay so export so i have already put the both the paths so that is done for me and again source slash etc profile i need to do and jps i need to check i am getting the process id and jps okay so this means java is successfully installed so here the step number 5 tells the same thing and in the step number 5 you can check because this is jdk setup okay so you will have jre as well as jdk okay that means java and java c compiler also it will be there so java hyphen version if you will type it will give you the version you can look at the version 1.8.0 underscore 161 and if you will type java c and then if you will type version you will see the same version you can see 1.8.0 underscore 1.161 okay understand they should match in the current installation we all are doing the same installation of centos minimal so you will find it same but in other releases of centos remember java will be pre-installed also okay remember java can be pre-installed but that will only be jre okay runtime environment not the compiler not the jdk so in that case your jre version will be different and your jdk version will be different so both should be same have you noted this right so just note this point okay so for us it is good we are good to go with now second step now install hadoop okay so java was prerequisite we did the java part now we are going for hadoop so download hadoop we have already downloaded we already have the hadoop part okay so let's go back cd tilt sign okay so it takes us back to the home folder of the root so hadoop is already there okay so we have downloaded now we need to extract already we know tar hyphen xvf is the command for extraction so tar hyphen xvf is the command for extraction and here we need to type hadoop 2.7.2 dot dot dz it is extracting now okay after extraction this also we will move into user local and hadoop we will rename it to hadoop okay for simplicity of the name and then we will follow the third step so ls you can see hadoop this blue folder okay again remember the colors okay so blue is a folder color now let's move it mv hadoop hyphen 2.7.2 into user local and let's rename it to hadoop enter so it is gone from here cd slash user local and here you can see hadoop is here okay this you can see this is hadoop okay let us get inside hadoop and see the directory cd hadoop and what is there inside hadoop we have been include libx these things are there inside hadoop clear right okay let's move ahead okay now what to do again environment variables okay environment variables are for everyone so here so many environment variables we need to put for hadoop okay so let me just quickly open the vi okay vim yeah vim slash etc and profile okay enter so now i'll go again at the end of the file enter and here just for the sake of understanding purpose i'll write a comment here java v a r i a b l e s java variables okay so that we understand ki uh, whose variables are we setting up okay and here we have hadoop okay hadoop variables okay so just for understanding purpose so let me just try if i can copy paste easily or else i'll have to type everything okay so i'm trying to copy it copy and let me try pasting it just right click wow it's wonderful so you can see uh, here just uh, just again observe the colors export is in yellow color hadoop home it is a variable it is in blue color okay then the path okay so i can see this is properly put here properly pasted so i'm not doing anything i'm just saving it now all right fine so once you do this that means you have set up the environment variables for hadoop also but like java i should say unlike java we need to do some more configurations in hadoop in java we did not do any configuration we just put these path and java was running but for hadoop we need to do some configurations we have already discussed the architecture of hadoop okay so in this case we have only one machine one node so how many replicas should be there one okay so such properties okay hadoop will store the blocks at the background so where it should store so such properties we will configure so let us move ahead and understand okay this much part i believe is clear yes no yes okay next part we need to tell hadoop about java okay we need to tell hadoop about java installation so fifth step is about that okay here what we will do 
now we will get inside hadoop we are already inside hadoop user local hadoop we are inside that okay let me clear the screen ls so these are the things which are inside inside your hadoop let me make it full screen okay yes so these are the things which are there inside hadoop here let us go into etc folder inside etc again hadoop folder is there let us go to hadoop folder here you will file all the xmls and configuration files okay let me do pwd again just remember this user local hadoop etc hadoop so inside hadoop etc hadoop you will find all the xml files okay so first we have to tell hadoop about java so that we need to tell in this file hadoop env.sh okay so vim hadoop env.sh already this file is existing okay so this is the file so here we can export the java home okay but for the simplicity purpose but i will tell you okay just go to the end of the file because you are doing for the first time so go to the end of the file and here you write export okay java home java underscore home is equal to slash usr slash local slash java this is what you have done you have configured just now java only right so this is how you just inform hadoop that our java is installed here and save it one part is done okay so first configuration of hadoop is to introduce hadoop with java okay we have done that step 5 is done next step now configure the xml files xml files you can see here lot of xml files okay for example hadoop policy.xml sdfsi.xml you just need to remember four xmls how many four xmls okay one xml is core side.xml okay so let me just uh, show you them okay so one is let's say cat core side.xml this is one okay second one is again cat hdfs side.xml third one is again cat mapred side.xml okay and fourth one is again cat yarn side.xml so these four okay hdfs side.xml core side.xml okay once again yeah so here so hdfs side.xml this one then core side.xml this one then mapred side.xml okay here is the template for it and then yarn side.xml these four files we need to consider okay so let us see that how we need to consider them okay so first is core side.xml we need to put these properties so i am copying it okay i am not typing it just to save our time so i am copying this okay be careful while reading the xmls so vim core side.xml you can see here already configuration configuration is given so i'll delete this because i have also copied configuration from there so i'm deleting this okay and i'm just putting right click and the properties are pasted over here okay so you can see that uh, here fs.default.name okay file system.default.name okay this means this is property that where is your name node this is the property that where is your name node so your name node is basically in your local host i told you what is local host okay now you know what is local host okay and 9000 is the port number whenever sdfs wants to communicate so 9000 is the port number so just remember there is some communication port for name node and which we have configured as 9000 we can change it also remember okay don't get much into the properties now okay that we will discuss and understand later okay at high level you can understand second property is sdfs site.xml okay so let me open it here vim sdfs site.xml enter so here you can see configuration configuration is already there so i'll just copy the properties okay so first property i have copied the first property is about replication so you can understand i need not to interpret now i think property dfs dot replication and the value is one you you got the logic why one because we have only one machine okay now second property let us go here second property is okay so property and dfs dot name dot dir okay so this is basically for name node okay this is for name node so this property tells that dfs dot name dot dir dir means directory okay name node directory so name node directory should be inside slash there should be a folder called as storage and there should be a folder called as name okay so that folder should contain all the directories of name node okay remember name node has got edits and fsmh to be handled we will find them here remember this path okay slash storage slash name what we will find fsmh and the edit logs okay we will see we will see them here okay next now blocks we will think about where 
what we upload in Hadoop, where that goes, that goes like a block at the back end. Okay, so that we will configure now. So here you can see DFS dot data dot dir. Data means your data node related to the blocks. Okay, so this property I am taking from here. Okay, I could have taken all at one time, but just we are discussing one property at a time. So I am taking one by one. So yeah, I have taken this and I am putting this here. Okay, so I have put it here. Fine. So inside storage only for the sake of, you know, there should not be any confusion. So inside storage, we have created one more folder data inside that all the data would be there. We will see the blocks also there only. Okay. Let's move ahead and see over. Okay. Slash configuration. We already have slash configuration here. That's it. So save it. So two files done, right? Core site is done. SDFS site is done. Next is mapped site.xml. Okay. So we have seen that here mapped site.xml is not there, but there its template is there. So what we will do CP, we will create a copy mapped site.xml template. So mapped site.xml, we will create a copy of it. Okay. So now you can see we have mapped site.xml also. Okay. From template we have created. So VIM mapped site.xml, we will open this one and within configuration configuration here we will put the properties here only one property we will put we will tell that our framework is yarn hadoop 2 we had discussed in hadoop 1 yarn was not there okay only mapped site.xml was to be configured for job tracker and task tracker but now job tracker and task tracker are not working yarn is working that means resource manager and which one? Node, node manager. Yeah, application manager. Yes, agreed. Okay, so resource manager and node manager, they are actually actively working. So we will just tell that mapreduce.framework.name, it is yarn. The mapreduce framework is yarn now. Okay, so we are just telling it by this property. So I am taking this property this much and I will put it here. Okay, that's it. Nothing more in mapred.xml. The last one is vim yarn side.xml. So this yarn side.xml again here we will put here certain properties we will put so here you can see okay so only one one property as of now we are putting okay that is yarn dot node manager dot aux auxiliary services and the aux services is map reduce shuffle okay that is that is what we are configuring the this is for node managers okay only one property we are setting there are many properties here but Th that is not the intent at this particular point. The intent is just to configure a single node Hadoop cluster. This is done. Okay, save it. So four files we have configured: core site, SDFS site, mapped site, and yarn site. Right? Clear? Okay. Now moving ahead. After this, after this we need to format the name node. Okay, this is very critical and important step. Don't format the name node two times. Okay. Don't format the name node two times. Okay, so before formatting, I would like to do some more things. Let me clear the screen. Okay, I would like to give this machine a name, a proper name. Okay, so we have a file vi or vim slash etc host name. Okay, so inside that the name is given as localhost local domain. I don't want this name. I have deleted that. I want to give this as uh, Hadoop only. Okay, so I am gi giving this machine a name as Hadoop. Okay. Fine, I'm saving this. So where where did I do that? VIM slash etc slash hostname. Additional thing, the IP address is 192.168.133.131. So I will configure this IP in etc host as file. Here, here only loopback address is given. You can see only loopback address is given. I don't want this loopback address. I'm putting here. the IP address and the name of the machine. This is FQDN we had, we had discussed yesterday. Okay. And I'm sorry. So let me just quit it. Okay. Once again, let me open it again, delete and insert only for one time. Hadoop escape shift column WQ. Okay. Saved. Let me do cat slash etc just to cross check whether it is. Yeah, fine. Now, if I ping Hadoop, it is able to ping now. Why? Because I have put Hadoop inside etc hostess. You are getting? So if you want to give your machine a name, so update the host name file and update the host s file, hosts file. Update these two files. Now, inside only one file, core side.xml, 
here I had put localhost I will change this localhost to what name Hadoop you got it why I am changing default name was localhost I am changing it to Hadoop now ok so before formatting the name node I am doing this because then what will happen name node will uh, take localhost somewhere and somewhere Hadoop ok so I have done this much now the better thing would be I will restart this machine because here you see it is written root at the rate localhost if I will restart it will be root at the rate Hadoop ok so for restarting you have a command called as init 6 ok so init 0 your init 0 is basically a command for stopping shutdown init 6 is for restarting ok so I have given this command remotely from putty so putty was out of the network now it is not connected to that machine let us go to the machine now and you can see that it is starting back again got it right so you can note it down one is init 0 shutdown command second is init 6 restart command ok it is going to restart the machine alright so by the time it is restarting let us go to the document yeah so the step 7 is hdfs name node format this is what we need to do ok we will do it now ok it is restarted let me log in root hd and if config yes I am getting the address also great and uh, now let me go back to putty and here let me do restart session login as root password is hd you can see root at the rate hadoop are you able to see this it was earlier root at the rate localhost and now it is changed to root at the rate hadoop now you also know how to change the host name also right so now whenever you want to refer you can always refer ping hadoop ok so you can refer your machine as name hadoop ok this is clear all clear right now another thing the file slash etc profile ok where we have put all these paths so if you put all these paths then basically this enables whatever hadoop commands are there they should get enabled the Hadoop command should get enabled. What does that mean? If I type HD and tab, so it should complete HDFS. So you can see that it is giving me hints HDFS, right? You are getting this means yes, it, it, it's enabled. If I type JA, it will give me Java. So if I don't put these paths in the etc profile, okay, these paths in the etc profile, I will not get these suggestions. Okay, when you type something here, you press tab, you are getting suggestion because you have updated those paths in the etc profile file ok so remember this thing so for any software you need to identify what are the environment variables for that particular software put them in the etc profile and the commands for that particular software will get enabled so this command ok the, uh, the format command sdfs name node format so here you can see this sdfs command it is a command it should get recognized and it is getting recognized here you can see it is getting recognized so I'll write sdfs and then name node name node name node hyphen for mat format now after running this command it should end with status 0 status 0 means successful ok I have run this command so hopefully it should end with status 0 otherwise there will be some error ok errors are normally in xml files we do some something typo error and you can see here exiting with status 0 so we are lucky that we have configured everything correctly ok we have configured everything correctly and here you can see storage directory do you remember we had given slash storage slash name you remember this thing so it has created that particular directory do you remember we had discussed something about block pool id so you can see here block pool id it has give, it has generated some block pool id this is the block pool id are you able to re recollect those things which what we had conceptually discussed right so it has generated some block pool id it has generated what we had configured in the xml files ok now let us explore this ok so name node is formatted ok seventh step is done ok now let us just ok before moving ahead let us just do sla ls slash storage ok enter you can see the name folder here right i had told you what will be there inside name fs image and and edits ok let us go and explore before moving ahead into any step cd slash we are just exploring not doing anything so here only the data folder will be created for data nodes you remember we had configured 
dfs.data.dir slash storage slash data so for data nodes here in front of a name okay there will be one more folder but that will happen later on little little later okay cd name let's get inside it so here you can see current let's get inside current here you can see fs image fs image md5 scene tx id and some version you got the fs image we have not yet started any of the hdfs operations so we don't have any edits now it's very much clearly visible there are no edits but there is fs image okay because fs image needs to be created by name node so it is created okay let us see the version file okay sorry version file so here namespace id is given cluster id is given we had spoken about cluster id also you remember right so one is cluster id one is block pool id so cluster id is for everybody okay name node resource manager everybody has to basically uh, have this cluster id but but the block pool id is for name node and data nodes only why because block pool id is where the blocks should get stored block pool id's purpose is different storage only cluster id is who belongs to the whole cluster cluster is your map reduce as well as your sdfs your yarn as well as your sdfs that is the your cluster okay yeah so here cluster id is given c time is something storage type name node block pool id is given and layout version is given okay so these properties again we will we may discuss some day about them fine let us go back okay let us go back cd tilde now i'm coming back now now after this step okay we need to start the services okay all the services step 8 all the services are present in s bin okay s bin is the folder where all the services are present okay where is hadoop where is hadoop inside user local okay we have put it inside user local in your cloudera machine it is inside etc here it is inside user local so this is your hadoop folder okay cd hadoop inside it where we need to go s bin so cd s bin here you will see scripts all these are scripts okay if you see sh scripts are for linux cmd scripts are for windows okay so windows also it is possible you can configure okay so we will be starting you can see here start all dot sh we can go for this okay so let me go for start all it will tell me that you should actually go for dot slash start dot start all dot sh okay this is something you can run okay it will actually ask me that you should run uh, separately okay but before that before that any other file we have masters or slaves okay no so so it is single node so i am not bothering much about other files so start all dot sh i am running and now you can see it is starting now you, you can see starting name nodes on hadoop uh, read these things okay because you need to read these things if something is not starting read it will tell you it is failed it did not start okay it is asking me shall we connect so i am saying yes we, we should we shall connect every time it will ask you password okay so for making it password less again you have to generate a key and you have to authenticate it that's a different process we will discuss it separately so i am putting sd here my password okay starting name node and it is creating a log understands look at there okay logging here you can see logging to user local hadoop logs hadoop root name node hadoop dot out you are getting it is creating logs as well okay again it is again asking to connect i am saying yes again password sd okay starting the data node now and it is also logging so whatever activity you will do that activity is going to be logged understand this thing okay again asking for next service i am saying yes password is hd okay for, uh, secondary name node it is starting and uh, then so we primarily need name node data node resource manager and node manager so these four only we need okay we are not much bothered about secondary name node as of now so i have put the password starting the okay it says it has started everything so now let's type jps and enter so luckily we have name node we have secondary name node we have resource manager we have node manager and data node so all the five services have started so hadoop successfully configured okay this is a test testing part so you should get all these services running okay name node secondary name node resource manager node manager and data node all these services should be running okay now because this is this is my machine which is uh, uh, which is minimal machine so i i cannot open the browser here but i have the browser for hadoop right i have browser for hadoop so let us configure the browser on windows
we can configure the browsers on windows okay let us see that part so i believe that is the next thing given here so yes so step 9 and 10 so here you can see start dfs.sh start yarn.sh but what i did i did start all.sh so you can do start all also but you can separately start okay each and every service that is also a uh, 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 option you have okay now next next is we will we will see the hadoop guis okay so how to see the hadoop guis in windows press windows plus uh, windows plus r okay and this will open okay windows button and r and type drivers here okay in the drivers you will get this file okay so here also you have etc folder in windows you can see this is etc folder in windows okay so let me make it little larger if possible no worries okay so in etc we have host s file okay this host s file in linux also you had seen we had host s file and what we did in the host s file let us see here so cat slash etc slash host s we have written this the same thing we will put it in the windows also this only we will put in windows also so this host s file i am copying it and i am putting it on the desktop okay because there it won't allow me to edit okay it, because that's a admin area okay so it won't allow me to edit so i am opening it with notepad plus plus and i will add this one line into this file okay so at the end of the file okay anywhere you can add you can add here also okay wherever you want so here i am adding that line okay let me copy it once again from here so i am copying this much okay just select it will get copied and yes i have pasted okay so 192 i am saving this i have saved this file let's go to windows copy this file from the desktop now okay so i am copying this file and i am pasting it inside here control v paste okay replace the file in destination and yes it is saying you will need to provide administrative permission i am saying continue and paste it i have done that okay now i'll go to browser okay let's go to browser now so so here is the browser let me let me open a new one and here i can type hadoop colon 50070 okay my machine's name is hadoop i i have given here in the here you can see otherwise i'll have to put the whole ip address i don't want to put the whole ip address i just want to name it with hadoop so hadoop colon 50070 enter it will open the name node sdfs page okay so now just wait and watch it will do that by that by the time it is bringing it up i'll write the second one also so hadoop colon 8088 okay enter so we should be able to see the two guis here okay one gui for the name node and here we should be able to see the GUI for the the thing, uh, the the all applications yarn. Okay, so it is not giving it us here. So what I will do? Okay, let's do one more thing. It is not giving it us here. So there are some firewalls which restricts the communication. Okay, there are some firewalls. Okay, so if firewall is restricting the communication, so what we will do? We will disable those firewalls. Okay, if it is not giving, we will disable the firewalls. Yeah. So here you can see. Okay, for disabling the firewall. Okay, <clears throat> so I am disabling the firewall with systemctl stop firewall d. Only one command. Okay, so systemctl. Okay, and stop. Yeah, so stop firewall d. Okay, I am stopping it and then I can disable it. Yes, so systemctl, systemctl, d i s a b l e disable firewall d i have disabled it so next time it will not start also this is one thing i have done and uh, one more thing i will do um i will go to there is one more firewall okay which is vim slash uh, if i remember um, sysconfig no etc etc sysconfig network i believe here no Fine. Let us see if it happens with this. Okay. If I'm, if we are able to work with this, yes. As soon as we have disabled the firewall, the this is working. Okay. And even this should work. Okay. This is also working. Okay. So, so uh, etc sysconfig. Uh, okay. So there is another firewall which I am not exactly remembering. Okay. That also needs to be off. But here you can see the Hadoop setup is again successfully done. Okay. This is the home page for HDFS 
this is better than the Cloudera one which we were seeing. Okay, because this is the uh, higher version of it, 2.7.2. This is that version. Okay, and here you can see the configured capacity is 17.7, 17.7 GB because 2.3 GB is consumed by your OS itself. Okay, OS and other things itself. Live nodes, dead nodes, decommissioning nodes, all the statuses you are able to see here. Okay. And here if you click data nodes, you will see which data node is there. Once we are making it multi-node, understand? Once we are making it multi-node, okay? In the data node section, here we are able to see only one node. We will be able to see multiple nodes here, okay? If, if I am creating one more data node and adding, so I will be able to see here two data nodes, okay? And last thing here under utilities. In utilities, you need to click on the browse the file system and here you should be able to see all the files which you which you have loaded in the SDFS. Okay, this is your SDFS page. We'll test little more also. Okay, whether the data is loading or not, that also we'll test. This is all applications. This is your yarn. Okay, your resource manager and node manager. They basically uh, bring this you, uh, up to you. Okay, and here you can see all these options. Okay whatever applications are running or stopped and how the applications are scheduled. So here you can see we have a capacity scheduler. Okay, max capacity. We have a capacity scheduler here. Okay, we have different schedulers, capacity schedulers, FIFO schedulers, fair schedulers. You may read about them later. Okay, just for your information purpose, I am showing you here. Okay, now just let's do one test. Okay, CD, let's go to tilt and enter. And here let's create a file. Okay, VI and we will create test.data okay simple file we are creating and we are writing this is a test file to be okay to be LOA DED loaded in to Hadoop okay so a test file to be loaded into Hadoop I have created okay now for loading into Hadoop SDFS DFS hyphen first create a folder let's create a folder mkdir slash data enter so i'm trying to create a folder into hadoop it is giving me some warning okay but let us check sdfs dfs hyphen ls slash is the folder created we'll see here yes slash data is created and we will refresh this and slash data is created right it is visible right this is your slash data correct just now i created and i will load this file sdfs dfs hyphen put and I have created a file test.data into slash data in SDFS. I will put that file. I am loading that file and let me go inside data. So I am going inside data. This test.data is here. So this means Hadoop is successfully set up. All the services are successfully running. The UIs are working. We are able to upload the data. We are able to create the folder inside the data or inside the SDFS. So that means Hadoop is successfully working for us. Fine. Okay. So this, this is uh, where you have to reach. All right.